Welcome back to the course. Before we talk about why gender-based violence is the problem, let us talk a bit what gender-based violence actually is. Gender-based violence and violence against women are two terms that are often used interchangeably, as most violence against women is inflicted by men on them only because of their gender, and it affects women disproportionately. Recently, we can find examples of those two terms being merged into one, gender-based violence against women. Such term is used in the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, so-called Istanbul Convention. However, there is more to gender than being male or female. Somebody may be born with female sexual characteristics, but identified as male, or male and female at the same time, and sometimes at neither, as neither. LGBTI people, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and other people who do not fit heterosexual norm or traditional gender binary also suffer from violence, which is based on the factual or perceived sexual orientation and or gender identity. And therefore, violence against such people falls into the scope of gender-based violence. What is more, men can also be targeted with gender-based violence. Statistically, the number of such cases is much smaller in comparison with women, but it should not be neglected. Gender Matters, the Council of Europe manual on gender-based violence affecting young people, provides the following definition of gender-based violence. Gender-based violence refers to any type of harm that is perpetrated against a person or group of people because of the factual or perceived sex, gender, sexual orientation, and or gender identity. Gender-based violence can be sexual, physical, verbal, psychological, sometimes called emotional, or socioeconomic, and it can take many forms from verbal violence and hate speech on the internet to rape or murder. It can be perpetrated by anyone, a current or former spouse or partner, a family member, a colleague from work, schoolmates, friends, an unknown person, or people who act on behalf of cultural, religious, state or intrastate institutions. Gender-based violence, as many types of violence, is an issue of power relations and it is based on both the belief and intention to assure people's inferior position in the family, at school, at work, in the community, or in the society, and make them subordinate. And it is always performed with the intention to harm another person or people. So why is gender-based violence a problem? First of all, gender-based violence is a human rights violation. It is an unrelenting assault on human dignity, depriving people of their human rights. Freedom from violence is a fundamental human right. Gender-based violence undermines a person's sense of self-worth and self-esteem. It affects not only physical health, but also mental health, and it may lead to self-harm, isolation, depression, or suicidal attempts. Gender-based violence threatens persons' physical and psychological integrity. Everyone has the right to feel safe and secure. The lack of safety and security of a person impairs the way people function in the family, community and society, and it may impede self-realization and development. Gender-based violence is an obstacle to the realization of every person's well-being and right to fulfillment and self-development. Gender-based violence is discrimination. It is deeply rooted in harmful stereotypes and prejudices against people who do not fit in a traditional gender binary or heteronormative society. Gender-based violence therefore pushes people on the margins of society and makes them feel inferior and helpless by using discriminatory practices. In the case of men who do not act according to dominant masculine gender roles, gender-based violence 
has the function of correction by example. The severity of the punishment for men who do not act accordingly to the expectations of male gender roles, whether gay, bisexual or heterosexual, may be related to the perceived danger that their difference presents to normalized and dominant assumptions about gender. Their very lives might collide and appear to contradict the idea that there are natural forms of behavior and social roles in general for men and women. Agreeing to violence means agreeing to keeping and sometimes reinstating harmful stereotypes and prejudices that can be used against people we respect or love or against ourselves. Gender-based violence is an obstacle to gender equality. Gender equality is central to safeguarding human rights, upholding democracy and also preserving the rule of law. Gender-based violence contributes to cultivating a heteronormative society and the power of men. Gender equality entails equal rights for people of all genders, as well as the same visibility, empowerment, responsibility and participation in all spheres of public and private life. It also implies equal access to and distribution of resources between women and men. Gender-based violence is underreported and the perpetrators often get off scot-free. The myth of what happens at home should stay at home and that it is nobody's business what happens in the family is very common. It makes denouncing the violence as well as the provision of health and support services very difficult and exposes the abused person to greater harm, which may end up dramatically in some cases. What is more, violence very often silences those who are affected by it. But by failing to speak out against domestic violence, we also mirror the techniques that are used by the perpetrators. In some countries, most, most types of, and forms of gender-based violence are illegal and punishable by law. But there are many lagging behind. The Istanbul Convention of the Council of Europe asks for criminalization of different forms of gender-based violence. Maybe the most important is that the gender-based violence affects everyone. For example, children raised in families where a woman is battered are automatically victims of violence as well. Sometimes not physical, but always psychological. They witness violence and may get an impression that such behavior is justified or normal. In other words, they learn violence. They are also brought up in the culture of violence that may negatively impact their self-development and functioning in the society. Gender-based violence affects family members, friends and colleagues, everyone. Everyone can be targeted with gender-based violence. And maybe last of all, gender-based violence has a very heavy economic cost. It requires the involvement of different services, medical, psychological, police or justice system, and it results in loss of resources or employment by victims. It makes people underachieve in work and education and negatively impacts their productivity. Many people who suffer from gender-based violence cannot stay at home and need a place to stay, which sometimes results in homelessness. Shelter services need to be provided for such people. While there are services for abused women and their children in many places in Europe, although not enough, the situation with shelters for LGBTI people remains really critical.